Hi friends, it's Jim Alfredson here with the Kurzweil PC4. Today we're going to talk about the arpeggiator and the CC sequencer. And afterwards we'll touch upon the multi-chord function and the ability to switch patches with a foot pedal. So let's begin. The PC4 arpeggiator has two dedicated buttons. The first button is the on and off button, which turns the arpeggiator on. And when I hold keys, we get classic arpeggiator function. And the latch allows you to press the keys and let go. And the arpeggiator runs on its own. There are many more features of the arpeggiator. To access those, we press our edit button. And we use our soft buttons to navigate over to the arpeggiator. First up, we have our different presets, and there are several programmed into the PC4 from the factory. We have our mode to our latch source and our range. The great thing about the range is that it can be set using our intuitive entry. We simply press and hold enter, and then press the key that we want to be the low range. Now our low range is set, and we can do the exact same thing for the upper range. Press and hold enter, press the key, and now our upper range is set. And now when we go to play our arpeggiator, it's only affecting the notes within that range that we set. We can also choose how much the notes are shifted and the velocity can be fixed or it can be whatever is played. The tempo of the arpeggiator can be set to the global tempo or it can be set to its own independent tempo. We have the global tempo knob right here. As we adjust our tempo knob, we can adjust the global tempo, but going back into the arpeggiator, its tempo remains the same at 75. This means that the arpeggiator runs independently of the system tempo, which means other things that rely on the system tempo, including LFOs and delay times, are unaffected by the tempo of the arpeggiator. But the real power comes into play with the step sequencer mode. Just as the name implies, this is a step sequencer that can have up to 48 steps. Each step can have separate note values, velocity, duration, and how long each note lasts. Of course, these can be saved as a preset. I've already saved one here. Now, if I play a single note, and latch it, I've got a bass line running. So as you can see, the arpeggiator function is very powerful and allows for a lot of flexibility. Next, we'll go into the CC sequencer. It looks a lot like the arpeggiator, but the difference is that the CC sequencer sequences CCs, or continuous controllers. These can be any continuous controller that's in the PC4, including filter, panning, filter cutoff, resonance, note, attack, decay, etc. So if we turn this on on our bass patch that we just played, So that CC sequencer is affecting the filter of that bass sound. Now these bars here are each step of the CC sequencer. Each sequencer can have up to 64 steps, and there are four sequencers per program. So you could have filter, panning, attack and decay, note on and off, all being affected by the CC sequencer. Four different lanes, up to 64 steps. There are several presets in the CC sequencer. Here's a simple filter. <laughs> Here's a preset that does panning. And here's a preset that does filter frequency and resonance. And of course you can program your own CC sequences to affect any CC within the PC4. Another nice feature of the CC sequencer is it has its own soft button available right at the home screen to turn it on and off. So that's the CC sequencer. Hopefully you got a sense of how powerful it can be. I'd like to play a preset right now from the PC4 library that features the CC sequencer affecting filter, note cutoff, and some other parameters. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
Next, let's talk about the multi-cord feature of the PC4, which is an amazing feature that makes live performance much easier for the keyboardist that has to cover a lot of different parts. The multi-cord functionality is part of our multi, so we'll go into a multi. And here we have a basic piano multi that I created earlier. So as you can see, I was just playing one note with my left hand, but getting full chords out of that one note. Now this isn't an auto chord feature, this is a pre-programmed feature that you have to set up beforehand, but it's extremely useful for the live musician. So let's dig in and see how it works. So here we are in our multi, and I'm using layer one. If we go into controls, and then use our wheel to navigate over to key switches. So as you can see, there are up to 12 keys that can be assigned. And again, these can be anywhere on the keyboard and they don't have to be harmonically related to the chord that you want to play. This first note is the note that is actually going to trigger the rest. Right now it's set to F2. And here are the notes that actually make up the chord. So consider what this means for just a second. This means that during a live performance, when you have to cover a bunch of different parts, say you're covering a horn part, you're covering strings, you're covering a B3 part, and you only have two hands, you can actually assign individual notes to cover entire chords during the song. So it frees you up to play other parts with your hands while just holding a single note for an entire chord. And of course, this can be held with the sustain pedal and free you up to use the rest of the real estate of the keyboard. Very powerful feature for the live performance musician. The last thing I'd like to talk about are pedal overrides. So the PC4 has two sustain pedal inputs. You can see here we have sustain pedal one and sustain pedal two. Both of these pedal inputs are stereo inputs, meaning that they can accept dual pedal units. And we can use one of these inputs to decrement or increment through our patches. So we don't have to take our hands off the keyboard to change sounds. Here's how you do that. The first thing to realize is this is a global setting, not a per patch setting. So we must go into the global menu. Once in the global menu, we want to use our soft buttons to navigate to the second main menu right here. And now we see our switch overrides. And they're called overrides because they'll override any function that is programmed into a program or a multi. Let's use our navigation buttons to navigate down to pedal override 2A. And we can see it's already set to data increment. That means it will increment through the patches as we press the pedal. We can also assign it to data decrement. Let's set it back to increment. I've got my pedal plugged into switch two. And as I press the pedal, you can see it changing patches. We can also set it to change our quick access patches. So we have our quick access patches set up right here. This is my set list of sounds that I use during my set. And I can increment through those as well. Again, we go into global, main two, and set it to quick access increment or decrement. So as I press the pedal, you can see it changing through my quick access presets. So remember, each switch input in the back can accept dual pedal units. So you could set one to do increment and one to do decrement and be able to access all your patches without lifting your hands off the keyboard. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. I've set up a patch that incorporates everything we've talked about. I've got an arpeggiated bass line on this note with our CC sequencer affecting the filter. I've got a multi-chord on this note and this note, meaning I can play chords and bass lines with one hand, and then I'm going to solo with this hand. So here we go.